there are a few ground rules. So trigonometric identi identities, you haven't done proofs before in uh, mathematics. This is the closest thing we've come to to proof. And in order to uh, solve proofs or solve identities, there you need to have a certain truth, a certain number of truths that you certain things, expressions that you know are a hundred percent true. So first of all, we're going to start with tan x. Now tan x, whenever you're doing identities, which are basically proving expressions where the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, um, for tan x. Whenever you see tan x in a problem, in an identities problem, you're always going to replace it with sine x over cos x. Whenever I do identities, I always replace the tan x right away. Sine x over cos x, because tan x is actually equal to sine x over cos x. Please start construction. There will be a swap check for T25. The other, the other major truth when you're doing identities is that sine squared x plus cos squared x, whenever you see this, even if they've been separated, you want to put them together because sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. This is extremely important. And guys, this concept you should be taking notes on because it's very, very challenging, okay? So copy it down. Sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. From this identity, from this truth, we can kind of shuffle things around to get two other statements. If sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1 and I want to isolate my sine squared x, well, that means that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x. And if I want to isolate my cos squared x, that means, oops, that means that cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. These are things you are going to have to memorize. If you don't memorize this, it's going to be quite problematic, okay? I'm going to give you some hints to help you solve identities before we actually do problems. Uh, one of the tools that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how factoring is key. And you're treating identities the way you treat algebra. Also, we're going to have fractions and rational expressions. So you have to find common denominators. So we're going to do that. We're going to factor. We're going to find common denominators. And we're also going to manipulate the equations. Manipulating means when you see a 10, replace it. When you see a 1, you might want to replace it. When you see sine squared, replace it. You want to replace things with your truths. These are the, the truth formulas that uh, you've been given. Replace, replace, replace. Your original question can be manipulated, can be changed to fit your needs. Trig identities are really like a big jigsaw puzzle that you have to put together piece by piece. You're not going to be able to put it all together right away. It's going to take steps, okay? So uh, a lot of steps, actually. And one thing I want to show you. So if you had the expression x squared uh, minus, let's say, 81. If you had the expression x squared minus 81. You might know right away that's a difference of squares. You can factor it using trial and error to x plus 9, x minus 9. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. So when you have algebra, it's, I mean trigonometric algebra, you have to tackle it the same way. So if you have sine squared x minus cos squared x, Notice that sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. When you have a negative, there is no, it's not equal to anything. However, when you have sine squared x uh, minus cos squared x, 
That's the same as a difference of square situation. So if I want to do trial and error, well, I'm going to break sine squared x up into sine x times sine x. You can always break cos squared x up into cos x times cos x. Because it's a difference of squares, and there's a negative in between those two expressions, if I make one of them positive and one of them negative, then I know that sine squared x minus cos squared x simplifies to sine x plus cos x times sine x minus cos x. So sometimes when I'm really stuck with the trigonometry because I can't visualize it the way I can see the algebra, I do an example of algebra that's similar to it and compare. If this is a difference of squares, I do an algebra question that's a difference of squares, so I kind of see what I'm doing. Whatever you do with your algebra, you can apply to trigonometry. So even if you're looking at a problem and it seems confusing, that you have the knowledge already somewhere in your brain, you just got to access it. And the more trigonometry that you do, or algebraic tri trigonometric expressions, the more comfortable you're going to get. Okay, we're going to do four identity problems. We're going to start off very simple. So this is my first problem. problem that I've been given. So what I mean by a trigonometric identity, you've been given a statement that tan x times cos x is equal to sine x. You have to prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. The best way to do this, you choose the side that is more complicated. So this is obviously a little bit more complicated than just sine x by itself. So I'm going to choose this side, this whole expression, and I'm going to try to manipulate it in order to get it equal to the right-hand side, okay? However, in grade 12, and I know you're a functions teacher, you are not going to, we're just going to deal with the left-hand side first. I see a lot of students try to manipulate it and have equal to sine x. We haven't proved that the left-hand side is equal to sine x yet. So either you can put a question mark over it because you haven't proved that, or you just tackle one side at a time, okay? So we're going to tackle the left-hand side first. First thing we're going to do, what I told you, replace the tan x with our truth, our identity that we were given in the previous slide. So I know that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. Tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. I can't replace cos x with anything, so I'm just going to keep it cos x over 1. Do you see anything that I can do for this problem, Jared? Yes. Diagonally, we look, the cosine cancel, they cancel each other out, so my left-hand side is equal to sine x, and this is equal to my right-hand side. Therefore, left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. We have proved our identity. Proved identity. That's a very, very simple one. We're quickly going to move into more complicated stuff. First, let's move into a factoring problem. So sometimes um, we're going to have to manipulate both sides, but... In uh, grade 12, mostly, you have to manipulate both sides. In grade 11, for most questions, we're only going to be dealing with one side and trying to get it to equal the second side. Okay. Sine 4x minus... So we just did something similar to this problem. Which side should we work with first? What is the more complicated side? Hapuka, what do you think? The more complicated side? Okay, this is actually a little bit harder to, to see right away. I'm actually going to tackle this side first because I know it's a difference of squares and it's going to involve factoring. 